You are completely surrounded! Surrender yourself! Whoa, whoa, hi, 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 hello! Hey, welcome to this informative tourist attraction about this marvelous Woohoo Island. You need to learn all about this amazing tourist destination to say poor paid actor Jiminy here whose grip is uh, it's based on knowledge. You know what? There's no such thing as me lore, but if there's a constant with these guys, it's they're passionate about islands, obsessed even. Like, they live in one of two kinds of islands. Their fantasy settings happen in a bulky island, or I guess you call that a continent. They even once built the longest, most inefficient zigzaggy highway to a dead end isle with a tiny beacon plaza and a lighthouse. These guys have infinite dedication to island. And among their most memorable ones is their vacation island the celebrated Wuhu Island. The development history of this place is well documented out there. It was first intended to appear in Wii Sports, but was scrapped due to game design discrepancies. It's only remained there found to date, being E3 footage that shows a severely underdeveloped Wuhu. Some videos with 3 million views claim it was once named the Wii Island, but I've got no idea where they got this information, it's likely fake. What I do know is that this island is likely completely man-made. Its first appearance in Wii Fit, before it was properly rebranded as Wuhu, as well as the original E3 design, had this peak that was eventually replaced by a volcano. It's extremely likely that the volcano had one final eruption that left the volcano as dormant as Hytale's development in addition to landmass changes. This would explain lots of things, but I'll explain them when I arrive at the landmarks that have been affected. One notable detail about Wuhu is the large amount of unused space. You'd think more of it would be filled with attractions or entertainment. That's why I think Wuhu Island is sort of a protected museum landmass. This will be coming in the test later, so you better take notes. The island itself is actually part of an archipelago, a set of landforms that all involve a backstory. So there's a lot to unpack, let's begin. I did mention I'd do this in the Wii Sports Resort video, didn't I? So whoever was waiting for that, here it is. If you exist. Let's begin with the Wuhu Town area. Basketball courts. Mies play basketball here with standard matches in the morning and individual three-point games at night. Mies are invited to observe the match at any time with the outside of the court holding benches and sunroofs. Apparently, homeowners around here enjoy watching the game on their window. Whilst the cafe on the first floor of this building arranges tables outside allowing customers to peer into the game, despite not having a back door. This cafe is called the Fountain Cafe. Bowling Alley the Strike Bowling Alley is the smothest building characteristic for its giant pin decorating the doorway, as well as a colorful neon sign. Few alleys include a chunky lane for 100 pin games, though it seems you have to manually position the pins, and it ought to be a pain to set up. They should probably invest in a system to do it automatically. It seems some kind of legendary perfect game occurred here, but that's mostly speculation and it could simply be a marketing technique. After all, they do boast over being the best bowling alley in the area overlooking that it's the only one. They gift a free set for first time players, by the way. Broken Clock Tower the reality of this is that the 3D model of this area forgot to add a second hand. Finding it humorous though, they decided to make it a landmark of the island. In universe, some clock fanatic actually stole their smaller hand. The smaller hand has since been fixed, but it's unclear whether the clock itself is functional again. It does change in Wii Fit Plus according to the time of day, but we never see it move, so I'm not gonna mention all of the buildings that had this exact same situation, but anything that was not in the original Wii Fit Island, you can assume it was placed after the volcanic eruption I mentioned earlier, and I'll explain why when it's time so not right now. Hillside cabins. These houses constitute a new town in development, less dense than around the square. They house residents who work as the resort staff. It's apparently 5 minutes away from town or a 15 minute stroll away from the hotel. That mentioned, this jog in Wii Fit Plus takes about 2 minutes. One of the four households closer to the lighthouse as an NES player who needs some pointers. No, they are just playing Mario 1, that game's controls are messed up. Red Iron Bridge, one of the oldest structures in Wuhu Island, remothered through the eras. It's a cable bridge, and it's easy as hell to crash into its cable, so look out. It's the most notable bridge in the island as well, and it lights up at night. Despite this, it's rather unremarkable, maybe even cost ineffective because it's probably already supported by its middle beam that makes contact with the floor, so the stick and cables could probably be removed just fine. Swordplay Coliseum, you battle here with swords reminiscent of Chambara. Unbelievably, the sport is real, minus the lightsabers on top of a suspended platform. Miss can get to the stands by boat, which is obviously annoying, but getting to see contestants plunge into the sea must be worthwhile. Matches aren't held after sunset, except the final match, which has the luxury of climactic lighting. Starboard Harbor, this harbor is the main disembarkment of the island. It's in a somewhat inconvenient location as the actual structure called Entrance to Woohoo is relatively far away. This is because not everyone has a judge. The main type of vehicle that is supposed to park here, it implies people are allowed to enter to the island with their own vehicles. Other types of boats with sails are often seen parked around here. The two main boats that use these are the Princess Peach, upcoming, and the Sea Caddy, which I'll explain way later on. Among the larger stone pathway to its side, Miss can access public transport in the Mario Kart version. The Queen Peach. Named after the Mario character and some real life ship that exists, I guess, this luxury cruiser never sails. Or it does, but only when we're in looking. 
It's likely this cruise stops for several days on Wuho Island before continuing its journey, and we're only in Wuho when it's stuck. Could this mean our me arrived here on it? It would certainly explain where the tutorial segment of Pilot Wings Resort occurs, because there's no building with this view. It features an Olympic pool, which is close when docked. They hold parties at night, which have a strict dress code. The Wishing Fountain. This location in the town center is known for tourist me's tossing their coins in and wishing away. There's so many, it's supposedly visibly overflowing. The coins glisten in the evening light, making this fountain more profitable than me. Unsurprisingly, it is a scam. Unlike me. On rare occasions, rhythmic parades occur around it, and in certain iterations of this place, an uninteresting flower patch replaces it, which is lame. The Runner Circle. This circle is circular, has a radius and resembles one of these, you know, for kids. Runners gather here prior to their daily run, some at 6am because they are authors and strongly need an excuse to fool their family members into thinking they have a real job, said the YouTuber. The rest of them reunite later, looking to avoid the fiery sun. A Wii Fit Basic run starts here, sometimes has a gazebo in it, and if you feel like you've seen it before but you don't entirely know, I thank you a lot for watching my content. And that's the square! Now listen here, buddy. I'm not sure how longer I can keep this up, and you've got to give me what I need. We both know you have it, and we're not making any concessions until you do, alright? I busted my ass to be here, and I simply need a little cooperation. I, I don't know what you're talking about, I just, I don't know, just please, please. Shut up! Shut up! I can see it shaping your pants! Stop lying! Don't worry. I'll give you some time to think it over. Okay, so once you do the town square, you start talking about the beach. Pong Boulevard. Multiple significant streets in Mexico City are named kinda like this. The Wuho one is mostly meant to bring a vacation atmosphere, unremarkable otherwise. Pilot Wings replaced the references to Wii Sports with generic messages such as telling us there's a gentle breeze at night, well no sh- Cocoba Hotel. Named after coconuts, this five-star hotel has impressive accommodations and kitchen. Despite this, parking isn't available. What they do have is soft beds with softer sheets and top-tier room service. Neat, but they don't accept coupons of any kind. It seems they have nine floors and terraforming was undergone to fit its exterior facilities. Pool Patio. A terra slash patio with a pool. You can order a renowned variety of tropical juices if you so desire. Next to it is, get this, one table tennis table. Two games cannot happen at once. Despite being about the pool, we never see a single me get in it, regardless of being available until late at night. So let me just take a quiz. Ah, I can't swim! Tennis courts. The humans in charge of these three courts have a recurrent issue with their balls being stolen by dogs, which is ironic because it's typically the other way around. They are built from clay and the balls are hot little courtesy. You actually cannot play anything here in any game with Wuhu, unless these practice courts in Wii Sports count, accessible by holding two when entering tennis. I don't think they are the same though, because the reformation effects of the resort are clearly visible, but not present at all in sports. It could simply have been there at some point in the island's history, but I don't know. Doesn't convince me. Sugar Sand Beach. The sand in this beach between the Cocoba Hotel and Camel Rock is especially reflective, so it looks like powdered sugar in the day, like being encased in amber during the sunset, and like walking on pearls at night. The lack of flora allows islanders to organize a massive bonfire here each night. There's a road for cars to park at the beach and point their headlights at the fire for some reason. Did you know white sand absorbs substantially less heat than yellow sand? Power Cruising Area. Would you believe me if I told you this area is for power cruising? The water here is deep enough for gates to be hidden and raised according to the cruiser speed. Landing Strip 1. It's a landing strip for planes exclusive to Pilot Wings Resort. Wow. Crazy. Camel Rock. They claim it once resembled a camel, but it's weathered over time until simplifying itself to two lumps. It features a convenient hole to fly through and acts as a natural divider between the beach areas. To experience the true Camel Rock experience, you need to go to Tezuka, New Mexico. It's like he versus the guy she tells you not to worry about, isn't it? Curiously, this is the only location in the entire island that retained its pre-resort name. Floating landing pad number one. A floating landing pad for people in jetpacks. I want a jetpack myself, actually. Frisbee Dog Park. People play with round throwable discs here along with their dogs. It seems the sand gets some form of treatment, so it's optimum for the poppers. Ah! Stardust Beach. A beach with odd star-shaped grains, which are often bottled and sold as souvenirs. The curious sand in this area is actually dead ferraminifera, an organism akin to plankton that lives in some seas of Japan. Their angelic exoskeletons mix with the sand, forming a clear inspiration for this location. There's less fantastical things on this island that I figured were fake, but no, this is the real thing. The, the star-shaped grains of sand, that's the real thing. Firework Lounge Zone 2. It appears there's two teams conducting firework lounges at night, each in their respective zones competing to impress people the most. They both shoot the same firework types, so it's a moot point if you ask me. The exclusive method to get up here is by aircraft. Sweet Beach. A beach hidden behind a sizable landmass. Pretty, silent, beachy. Private. It's a place for me to get laid. Come on, people. 
Apparently, this beach is commonly featured in postcards. I find it peculiar that the tide doesn't raise with the moon in Wuhu Island. It's obviously because of hardware limitations, but could there be more to it than meets the eye? Hmm. Beginner's wakeboarding area, often called this because its pronouns are they them. Despite being designed for beginners, it's a terrific spot for wakeboarding. Even world-class celebrities visit to enjoy some leisurely time catching some mad air. If you keep real quiet, you can hear the god boys in the sky praising the wakeboarder. Fireworks Lounge Zone 1, the second lounge zone. This one is smack in the middle of the sea. Why is the individual island numbered 1 and the prevalent one 2? It will eternally stay an enigma. Have you perchance ever consumed a video game cartridge? D don't answer, it's rhetorical. Was it a mistake when I ate Pilot Wings Resort in my ramen? Quite so, but I earned knowledge unbound to fly planes, explore the world, and to come to you with my taser gun firmly held to your family jewels to ask you for a meager favor? What do you say? Yes, yes, Mr. Police, this is the fast guy door after the wall! Okay, I knew I wasn't subtle just now connecting the story, but at least show a bit of professionalism and perform. Let's go on to explore the mountain area of Wuhu. It's extensive, so I'll divide it into three, the front side, the back side, and the volcano zone. Let's begin from the front, a more natural area that has been almost entirely untouched by a resort tampering. Sundown Point, a breathtaking view of the sunset, moon, or clouds can be discovered from this cape. It's so stunning, any photography snapped here feels professional. It's peculiar that they promote this location when there's another spot directly across with an even more stunning view. The Candle This lighthouse doesn't look like it's doing its job very well, but it's secretly three times brighter than the average lighthouse, giving off the light equivalent of 1.6 million candles, or 20.8 million lumens. It has almost no personality, being completely white, and does the name Candle. It wasn't intended to look like one, but it does. It sits upon a peninsula called Seagull Point, which has been artificially lengthened because the lighthouse was mistakenly built to be twice its intended size, though the Japanese swear it's actually only one and a half times. The size of the waterfall is explicitly stated, but also slightly contentious. For now, let's say putting them side by side through 3D model manipulation, the candle is about 5 meters smaller, 105 meters or 344 feet. More explanation will follow when I talk about the falls. That would make this lighthouse the tallest in the world, the current largest being 83 meters or 271 feet, located in Ile Vierge, France. The deformation of the landscape I mentioned earlier actually comes from the Japanese text, but this could simply be a silly Google translation. Passing next to it plays some Morse code about the inefficiency of Morse code. We don't know why. Pirate Eye! Underneath the candle is another potentially man-made monument, the Pirate's Eye. Passing through it gives lucky people luck, li like there's a chance it gives you luck. Some speculate it hides a gateway to another universe, regardless of the name, Woohoo doesn't have pirates. Excluding me, I guess, because 3D capture cards were made up by Big Pharma. European copies express it was created just for you. Wind or chart. Considering the winds in Wuhu are strong enough to lift a paraglider, you can assume these eight windmills generate a lot of energy. Enough to support the resort? Maybe not, but let's spend this belief. Wuhu Island is actually incredibly environment friendly. Everything from their cars to their energy is very mindful of resources. Sadly, stronger winds don't mean more energy. In fact, they can break the blades in the windmills, rendering them useless until repaired. Beginner's archery area. You can practice archery here with less intrusion from the wind than usual, so it's a pretty decent spot for beginners. Weathered Monument. A stone monument that has been better and now stands as nothing more than a random ass pile of rocks. No one knows its intended purpose, or even if it was truly built by ancient civilizations. Reportedly, the stone on top weighs 120 tons. Wouldn't wouldn't it involve tempering though? It accumulated moss on top as a result of the waterfall's drizzle. We here Italian plumbers have been known to drive under it. We can take a detour here momentarily to look into the steel water grotto. You can bypass an 8 minute walk by using the grenade jump exploit, but if you find that difficult, then the chilly air and soothing water dripping noises can suit your pain. Navigating through is rather difficult due to the confined space making it unlikely to fry through unskated. Unless you're from the future and have a jetpack, then it's no biggie. Alright, let's turn back. Footbridge. The Takimi Bridge is a patch shop currently being washed away by storms and repaired later. They might be reluctant to move it because it gives a scenic view of the waterfall while refreshing visitors through the misty shower. You can even notice signs of water damage when you approach it, but I think it might be unintentional. This bridge has been here since the original Wii prototype, being basically the least changed thing, sharing position, reason for assistance, and build material. Furthermore, here's an actual picture of the real-life Takimi Bridge. It's not inspired by it, I think, but it, they share name. Toppled Monument. 
There is a rock from one of the manures over top. The entire villa are unearthed and fell over, but they haven't decided to clean it. No mold is present in it, probably due to lack of humidity, but it's also conceivable that these monuments are simply taller, yet buried under the solidified lava from a volcano eruption. Either way, the toppled rock is rounded, as if it didn't actually break. Heartbreak Hill! Despite being known for being steep, there's even steeper climbs around. But I imagine this one's more common for people to climb or ride a backup. It's an excellent place for a workout. Unless you're walking out relationship issues, then I'd strongly advise against it. You might find your every dream falling apart. Lava tube. This tube doesn't contain any lava, it's just beneath it. Observe how if I try to bend the rules of reality, I can arrive at the lava quickly. Anyhow, this passage was dug out by me, so it's sort of mundane. I'll tour the other end later. Hilltop Overlook, a nice view of the island and its fireworks, probably here because whoever made the path was silly and made it too close to the ledge. At the same time, it does allow you to see the entire front side of Woohoo we've been talking about, so... Summerstone Fall, it's actually called Falls, but there's only one fall, so what gives? According to the game's Japanese and European description, this waterfall drops 7 tons of water down 110 meters or 360 feet. However, the English version states clearly that it's 330 feet, 100 meters. I'd say it's inconclusive based on the game info alone. Pilot Wings Resort has an altitude statistic and it drops for 120 meters, with the lighthouse being 114 meters, so the only thing we can conclude is that they have a 5% high difference. In Pilot Wings, trees are 30 meters tall, unusual for trees, so standard measurements and averages can't be relied upon, like cars are about 4 meters tall as well. So I'm going to take the game's provided sizes for granted and call it a day, taking the Japanese size because feet are stupid, not to kink shame anyone. There's a bridge over it, placed close to the water to catch canoes before they plummet to a horrible death and so millions of the island. Wobbly Bridge! This bridge was purposely set up flimsy. Also the longest bridge in the island, it's evidently started than it looks, given you can bike and hold a summary recreation of Japanese history. Forest Monument, one of the three maneuvers like the one that lost a piece earlier. It's at the base of the forest and looks exactly like the other two. It's possible these maneuvers all share the same purpose. Evergreen Grove, a forest known for its large variety of exotic birds and pleasing soundscape, as well as housing any terrestrial wildlife that the island has coming out at night. It was designed to purposely lack detail or personalities so future games in Wuho Island can modify it to accommodate their specific mechanics. Alas, Wuho Island accomplished its goal at becoming a place that feels like a charter, but no game that makes use of this has come out. Regardless, I'm sure older guests would appreciate a bench or two to birdwatch, but not even that luxury was given to this spot. Talon Rock, name of the Ricaros of the US, a mythical man who found himself some wax wings and flew so well he died horrifyingly scorching his skin and wings in the sun's surface. This 40 meter high formation overhangs surprisingly far. Apparently, Miss can survive this drop unscathed, even on a bicycle. Some often leap from it just dreaming of attaining flight. Uh, I yearn to become a me whose dreams felt even remotely realistic. This YouTube thing is taking a toll on me already. <laughs> Okay, man, we're running out of time, so you need to get right to it. Like, really, when do they let the hostage take it down? I mean, I, I guess you haven't been hostage less times than I'm taking hostages, but... Are you trying to fart most code in there? Oh, please, come on, I'm asking for something trivial here. Time to cover up those strange melodic noises that have been censored for your viewing pleasure with my mother rightly grating boys. So let's take it for a loop, shall we? I get it? Because back up the mount. Island Loop Tunnel 2. This natural looking tunnel is anything but natural, and is one of the two tunnels that connect the front and back of the island through the Woohoo Loop. Me, cyclists, and cars can all pass through here effortlessly, though it's expected that pedestrians watch out for traffic. A 3D texture scene is over this, leading to visible UV flaws. Cabana Lagoon, the most underused major location in Woohoo Island, with only a single archery stage taking place near it and it outright is removed in several games. It's a silent spot in exception of the planes and power cruises that pass by during the day, inaccessible without a boat as it is only connected by water. A maximum of four rooms can be hosted at a time, and the private beach access strongly implies that it was built for VIPs of some kind. Getting closer plays some pretty relaxing acoustic renditions of the Wii Sports Resort team. Have a listen. <laughs> Here's the night variant. Unexpectedly, this music was removed from Pilot Wings, because in case you couldn't tell, Pilot Wings Resort was actually just lapped together. This little overpass is neat, but completely unacknowledged. I did passing through here with a car though, it looks unsafe. Not because it could break, but like, what if I get an itch and slip into the sea and drown? Uh, I'm not paranoid, you are! Entrance to the mysterious ruins. 
Just a grassy plain that doubles as impromptu parking space, as cars cannot access the ruins themselves, and not because the cars can fit, but simply because the island disallows it for some unknown reason, probably preservation. People have reported hearing ghastly singing here. Mysterious ruins. Okay, so the mysterious ruins are an enigma even to the island archaeologists themselves. Or so they claim, there's treasures and traps and even an interest that has been unexplored for some reason. There's really two answers to this that are popular among the upper echelon me fan society. The first is that the ruins are actually just part of the resort, intended to be landmarks simply to attack tourists, and many things support this theory. The complexity of the buildings, a little exploration has actually been undergone of them, the lack of geologically sound positioning where more optimal locations contain no ruins, and even the lack of features that an ancient civilization would need, such as a water canal or signs of a plantation among other things. The lake is further than it seems. The exact same kinds of structures can be found under the water in Wii Fit Plus, but as I mentioned earlier, the sea level in Wuhu Island doesn't raise at night, nice, and sea level raise doesn't seem to be of concern to the Mies. Not only that, but the ruins there are also scenically placed, though that could simply be the environmental artist asking you to suspend your disbelief a little. Theory 2 is a bit more far-fetched, so I'll explain it when it's relevant. Fun fact! The entrance doorway to the main ruin is actually fully modeled in, perhaps hinting that this location was originally supposed to be explorable. Then in point, I'm gonna be a little disorderly here because this area is accessible through the mountain, but it's closer in terms of geography. It's a dead end. The Paul version's description at night is completely incoherent. What did they mean by this? Could this be the fabled water canal? Cliffside ruins. More unrealistic ruins that couldn't have been possibly built by an elderly civilization. They are raised 100 meters off the ground and have tiny writing, of which little is known. Admittedly, they do look pretty awesome. Mystery point, alright, so Pilot Wings Resort actually shaped the second theory of how the ruins came to be, explained by this empty spot with nothing in it. At all, it's just an elevated eye point with some vague descriptions about something happening. The answer? Aliens. They aren't evil aliens, in fact when you do spot their saucer, you hope reunite the Ufolets with their mothership. So aliens are all but confirmed visitors of Wuhu Island. This means aliens could possibly be responsible for the ruins, the inscription on them certainly looks modern and foreign, and that could explain some of these weird details I mentioned earlier. Personally, I think the resort theory holds more water, but take your pick. Serpent's Mouth, another piece of ruin close to the sea, marking the entrance to an eerie cave at the base of the mountain. It's named the Serpent's Mouth because of the Sea Serpent Cavern. This twisted tunnel has a singular ruin which aligns well enough with the unexplored ruin above. When the waves and wind pass through the mouth and cavern, it makes a whistling hum, which might be the singing some people hear from the ruin's entrance, and here it is. You can power cruise through here as other me spectate after arriving via Yach. And if the mouth's the mouth, does this mean... No... Maybe? Needle Point Spire, just a very tall rock in the sea, supposedly 65 meters high, but confirming it is tricky because it dips underwater. Supposedly it looks like a giant rose storm, but if that's the case, it also looks like cloudy when a chance of meat dwells is not a metaphor for- oh wait, wrong video, whoops. There's a more impressive pike in our next destination. Silky Sands, remember the lava tube I stopped myself from exploring before? It leads here, to a flat pit with some smooth and silky sand. Note silky, not made out of silk. That'd be crazy. In fact, I got a working theory about it possibly being pumice from the volcanic eruptions after being carefully treated into fine sign by the resort staff. It could have happened naturally with enough time, but I really doubt it. I now looped to no one. This tunnel is so lengthy, concrete was necessary to hold it up. With this, we've looped around, woohoo! There are legends about something supernatural emerging from here at night. Monsters? Ghosts, maybe? Insane people like flying through the pillars. Yeah. Ha, I got it! Finally! See? Was that so hard? Let me just give it a boot. Oh, wow. Your stick is broken as well. Well, I just... I played some Smash Bros and it just... Uh... Oh, well, same! <laughs> Did you also play the crap out of the 3DS? Um, actually, Shinobi 3D is one of my favorites. Oh, I know that one. It's sick! Oh, and have you heard of Gabrielle's ghostly group? It's so cute and insane. Alright, we're doing a thing. Uh, uh, top of Volcano, let's go. Heart of Makawuhu, it doesn't beat, but it is at the center of Makawuhu, the volcano. Arguably, the river flowing down from the inside could represent a bloodstream, I guess? It's described as wet and slippery, so although the model likes stalactites, I imagine that's simply Wii optimization, and yes, I skipped on the innuendo. Mario Kart evaporated the water, which sort of threw me for a loop. Also, it forks into two paths, one leads to the dead end, while another one lets you hike further up the mountain. Mountain hikers, some dudes climbing up a mountain. They are being pestered to head back at night, but it doesn't seem to face their fooling around. Pilot Wings removed every single me NPC, so they are gone, and in case you couldn't tell, Pilot Wings Resort was actually just slapped together. Daxi Lake. Such magnificent creatures. Every week you see them swim, and you cry. 
this lake resting on top of a cliff is immense. Apparently, the water here is relatively healthy to drink. That is, if it wasn't for the dogs who live and poop in this lake. But don't tell anybody about that. Canoe is the bound, and you can notice koi and carp, today I learned they're the same, swimming in these waters, meaning it's probably about 3 to 4 meters deep. It's hard to tell because it's particularly reflective. Damn, what's with Wii games having surprisingly good looking water? You can see the ducks in this canoe minigame are actually a marker to tell if you're going slow. A Nessie-like is rumored to live beneath, but I'm more intrigued by its orange juice appearance during the afternoons. I spent so many hours as a child fantasizing about a lake full of different flavored liquids, like there was, there, was, there, was, there was orange juice, chocolate milk, caramel ice cream, the blood of my enemies, tomato juice. South to it is the Summerstone Castle, a royal building with a blocky architect that would be terribly positioned since, you know, active volcano. It's actually kinda smart because enemies would have a really difficult time approaching from behind and serves as a vantage point, but it lacks towers completely. Wouldn't they need lookouts to protect the other wall? It's more of a keep than a castle. Of course, currently Woohoo doesn't have a king or a queen, and I can't even say it did in the past, its authenticity is uncertain, since there's no town around to rule over. You might consider one existed where the lake is now, but then why have a bridge over a non-existent river? Why create a kingdom here of all places? If you ask me, I think it's as fake as many other things in the island. Pines were added as of We Fit You. Also, cars drive into here and just go to the great beyond. To nowhere. I should have done an iceberg video, that would have performed better. Ugh, me and my stupid respect for my audience. See the tree tunnel. This tunnel is in the ring that goes around the volcano. That's it. I can't overanalyze a hole in the wall that much. Oh, what if there were giants and this is a glory off road vehicle? I find it curious that the only way to get to the upper volcano area is through the heart, which has a slippery stone road in a cave, a suspended bridge that was hastily constructed at an angle, and a Kirby and insecure dirt road around the volcano, and still, cars made it up there. Also, there's a road in the volcano somehow. This is ridiculously dangerous. I doubt the artist who made Woohoo Island realized this inconsistency. Remember when I said Woohoo was green, as in climate, or green is not a creative color, well, all cars in it are supposed to be electric, though I haven't an inkling as to where they get it, do they rent them? There's literally zero clues. This unlucky guest ran out of battery and has no friends to come help them, even at night. Watch out! German car guy is going to scream the F word! Boosgate, a boosgate that sucks flying vehicles in, gives them a good time and shoots them off to the volcano. No one cares to use it because there's literally nothing up there. Lone Sedar, a singular tree that somehow grew adjacent to a volcano. It's not impressive or different from the others, but I'd be willing to have a picnic under it. The Japanese guy who wrote the iPod description is very sensitive and would cry if he forgot something before climbing. I quite enjoy admiring its texture work. It's basic but also super effective. Notice the harsh transparency cutoffs and how it's just a cone with 8 radial planes. Pretty and cost effective. Mountain Monument, another of the treants and meniers. This one lost one of its three legs, it's an interesting. Makawuhu the actual volcano itself, also called Mountain Gamanga, so let's talk about it. Not only is it supposedly active according to the resort staff, but it also hasn't erupted in 200 years. Its center is completely hollow and has an additional entrance to the side, as well as a human-made monument that is made with some random ass stone that just manages to survive the scorching heat of the lava. Moreover, bees are allowed into it freely and it doesn't exist in the original Wii Fit iteration. Do I need to point out how unlikely it is that Makawuhu is fake? For starters, if a volcano can erupt, it's a terrible idea to keep people. Second, the volcano would be releasing incredibly unhealthy ash that could hurt the tourists and citizens at the resort. Thirdly, what business in the right mind would decide to take this liability? But let's suppose, in this hypothetical scenario, that Wuhu has a great evacuation procedure and the volcano doesn't produce ash. The opening would make no sense. Any rise of volcanic activity would be disastrous, and this hole wouldn't naturally occur. They'd have to build it. The lava monument at the middle wouldn't exist if the supposed original civilization built it. If they somehow made it, they either dug the road and entrance themselves less than 200 years ago, which would conflict with stuff such as the other meniers being buried under lava remains of the civilization evolving from tribes to castle to jet airplanes exceedingly quickly, and what of the weather cliffs that would have lost their shape? Or they had some other entrance we have zero details about. The inside of the volcano should be at roughly 1200 degrees Celsius or 2200 Fahrenheit, 30 times the amount of heat a human body can take. Not to mention the mists are working joyfully inside even though the floor should be hot enough to bake a pizza off it. Mists can perfectly survive a plunge into here with a plane or a jetpack, coming out almost unscathed. It, it just doesn't add up. Unless the mists are a different species, which is unlikely because otherwise the mysteries would no longer be enigmatic. But it could make sense, and it straight up is confirmed in Tomodachi Life. Personally, I'd rather believe the resort is fake rather than the Mies. This lava chamber can simply be some thick water with trickery to have the lava bubble up as well as fake the heat. On that note, 
we never even see the lava bubble. You can build a chronology from it. What if the volcano was hidden and erupted its leftover magma before actually going dormant between We Feet and Resort? But the islanders took advantages of the remodeling process to build a custom-made island paradise. Missing buildings, senseless time features, redundant and unrealistic ruins, they could all be explained. They set out to create a museum of nature. And succeeded. Oh, and Earth is flat. If we're gonna get outrageously conspirational, might as well cover all the bases. The faces of the moon are just fireflies moving! Magma bent. Lava is unlikely to pass through here because the volcano has a lower exit, but this could refer to the conduit through which the lava would race in the event of an eruption. How did the peak of the volcano get colored white if the volcano entrance is a hole they carved to build a monument and then died to an eruption that hypothetically provided the coloration? Was there no opening, in which case they naturally lowered the rocks from the crater downwards, which unless they're pals with Sisyphus or have incredible technology is nonsensical. Please just accept it, it's fake on the pill down, man! The volcano erupted, then they remodeled. It's not the aliens, they are literally friends with the aliens that they could have easily asked. Meanwhile... up from the volcano and take a look at the other islands and cool details of the archipelago. The Whale Shark, a blimp that circles the island and it breaks the fourth wall in Japan. If you visit the entire island, your Miss face shows up instead of the Wii advertisement and the messages become congratulatory. Miguel, a guy tour, just like me, am I right? However, if you fire a flare, I will not respond, he will. In case you're not aware, this is Miguel, internal ID 70. He is one of the few me's with voice acting, heard when he drops you off in Skydive. Form up! He also enjoys being followed and rewards you for doing so for 3 minutes. I suspect the island forces him to remain, reduced to a tourist attraction. Gateway to Woohoo, aka Triton's Ring. It's supposed to welcome arrivals, but the beach is on the way. Oh, remember the sea level tide inconsistency? What if we didn't realize it is changing because the resort is secretly a colossal boat? This arc being some sort of docking station. Hence why you can only enter by plane or through here. Well, the proof is cars, so don't count on it. I suspect this rock looks like a snake from under the sea. Whale Watchers! Wuho Island has astonishing sea life variety, from clownfish to anglerfish to blue marlin and, of course, whales. They don't live here, merely are migrating through, particularly on this spot where tourists camp hoping to witness one. It jumps out, but your plane goes right through because life is a simulation. Deserted Island! This island sucks, no one respects it. It's stupid, it's tiny, it's Mother Saccharin, and looky here, it's not even properly UV mapped. Worst island ever! Landing pad blimp, a blimp potentially repurposed from the whale shark with a landing pad. Their sizes are wildly different, so I doubt it's supposed to be the same. People are meant to try landing on it because it's supposedly tricky, it's not really, it's, it's, it's basically the same. Affordable land, this island is private and empty, so if you're a super fan of the island, you can build yourself a small vacation cottage or a damn mansion if you're bursting with ego. Getting electricity and water piped into this house must be an odyssey, yet it takes like seconds to build. Don't be misled by the name, affordable means 100 to 500 thousand dollars, which is pretty cheap for land, but like... Guys, I'm broke, I bought too many video games. Diving spot. Miss can dive from here at any hour. You cannot do it in Wii Sports Resort, but Wii Play Motion has an unused minigame for it and Wii Fit U actually implemented it. I think this is where said minigame starts, but it's hard to tell. You can see the private island of the garbage island, but there's other rocks you can't see in island flyover mode, here and here. Barnacle Arch, also known as Neptune's Ring, completing the duology. It's made specifically to fly under, locals call it pant-like. These arches are formed from waves eroding the stone with time, and they exist even in real life, they look pretty sick. Landing Strip 2, I almost forgot about this landing strip, because uh, it's just a landing strip. Undersea Cable Inspectors. These guys are inspecting the cables that connect Kuhu with Wedge Island. They must be pretty long, so they take all day. I sure hope nobody got themselves a vacation spot that would increase their workload. <laughs> the Sick Hattie, also known by its true name, the Albatross. It's just less marketable. I like the Powell name because it's a pun on gold. Since you can't get from here to there without buying a boat, Wuhu has public transportation that takes people to Wedge Island and back, totaling four round trips a day. You're intended to work around its schedule, its route is in a straight line, curves are involved, and on rare occasions, Miss have the opportunity to spot whales. Remember when I talk about the starboard harbor? Time truly fries. Sport fishing spot. Sport fishes reunite here 24 7 to sport fish and chat. They kinda make up a chummy friendship group based on their hobby, and I wish I had one of those friend things. 
in the day they hunt for the elusive blue morning, this fish that's commonly hunted in Japan. The wildlife variety, location names, among other things, are a clue will seem that Wuhu is intended to be a sort of fusion between Japan's island of Okinawa and Hawaii, meaning it's definitely in the Pacific Ocean. They are legally obligated to release the fish. Extreme Canoeist Okay, I'm taking notes. This crazy son of a gun decided it would be simple to canoe from island to island. He's trying to clip Florida man Reza Balucci around for his money. Big dude as NPC Mike in the preview icon. I expect he's regretting neglecting a sunroof. His head must be burning. However, I got curious and calculated the distance using the tennis courts, which should measure 78 inches per standard tennis regulation. 114 tennis courts roughly cover the space between. This means that the distance between Wuhu Dog and the Wedge Dog is of about 1.7 miles. And considering the average canoeist can canoe 3 miles per hour on still waters, the trip to and fro shouldn't take more than 2 hours. I'm adding about an hour of leeway for Mike to get breaks, current shenanigans caused by whales, or the wind blowing against him. Mike here is just enjoying a day in the middle of the sea and not actively trying to canoe. Also, you can power cruise from Wedge Island to Wuhu Island in about 2 minutes. Since the average top speed of a power cruiser is about 50 miles per hour, this is pretty accurate actually. Seaplane theme. There's three aircraft aviation themes that saw the skies in various formations at different times of day. The Blue Sky Club, the Sunset Club and the Starry Sky Club. They invite you to join in since there are 6 planes in each club, that's 18 pilots. Seaplane pilot themes are actually insanely uncommon, but there are some. You can find some through the Seaplane Pilot Association official website. Jet plane captains are banned from the organization, but who cares? They got a vehicle that can miss every single eye point with the most utmost efficiency. Actually, your plane was one of them, wasn't it, TL? I I'm sorry I shut your seaplane down and kept you hostage. Don't even sweat it, brother. I got a killer insurance plan and it doesn't matter. I realize now that what you needed wasn't only the device in my pocket. You needed friendship. You helped me notice, I did too. Thank you. Oh, GT, you're the best. Come on, bring it. All right, let's finish this tour by talking about Wedge Island, a small island with nine golf courses, a hotel, and two interesting views. You can play 21 holes in the Wii Sports Resort, but this island only has the first nine. Wedge Island Marina. Have you ever wondered at what time the nighttime is when you explore Woohoo? Well, it's roughly 9 p.m. because the location reveals the sea caddy leaves at 8.30 from these dogs and is moving along. Apparently, it's easy to infer people's plans based on their bags. Light bags want to frisbee and heavy bags want to golf. Golf Area A, a set of three golf courses, carefully curated. It's a solid set for beginners because you cannot lose your balls to sea hazards, though fetching them from the lake in course 1 must suck. The best theoretical score you can get here is minus 7. There's this little empty outer area with a cliff. It's not specific, nor does it have a name, but I like it, so I'll name it the Birdie Wing. 19 Hole Hotel. This hotel is primarily here for golf fanatics. It has a cafe, a sauna, and a spa. I imagine room service opens quite early because golfers are morning people. If you come with a significant other, the hotel finally lives up to its name. Also, don't tell anyone about this, but you can order a secret menu item by requesting them for some stamina cold udon. I don't know what it is, but I strongly doubt it's Gatorade or Ibuprofen. They probably give the latter away for free. This right here is a call for Sam M. Crab Rock. So here's something amusing. The name of this rock when read out in Japanese is Kuraburoku Twins, as in golf gloves. But the translators sort of missed this and thought it was called Crab Rock. This is surprising because the Paltron stations are basically one to one with the Japanese name, with this singular exception. It's even funnier knowing they also appended text about the locals calling it the twin bogeys to mitigate, furthered by another message about the name's origin being completely senseless. The Paul translations are more accurate to the Japanese, mentioning the monument looks fake and it originally had a stone golf ball that fell into the lake on the course to the right. How's that for overanalyzing? I'm going to get pink eyes staring at my screen thinking of all the cool things to say. Golf Area C, a set of three golf courses carefully come by scuba divers to retrieve sunken balls. I hope no one watching this loses theirs by mistake. It includes the crazy spiral, one that can be done quickly by playing risky, and the best theoretical score you can get for this group is 7 as well. Floating Land Pad number 2, a floating pad for people with a jetpack that didn't fall asleep getting here. Golf Area B, a set of three golf courses with the windy airs and fast grass, L like it grows fast, the grass isn't chasing you or anything. Or is it? Ah, ah, ah! The lowest theoretical score you can get here is... Minus 7 again! And finally, Mechahawk. 100% completing Pilot Wings Resort will let you visit Mechahawk walking around the way to island, reminding you that better games exist and that you've wasted your time completely. And this is the extent of what the footage of him looks like. Just amazing. In case you didn't know, Mechahawk is the boss in Pilot Wing 64. And that, my friends, 
was a tour to Wuhu Island to distract authorities from an ongoing hostage situation. Which I, I just reminded them of. Crap! Oh no, that, that whole thing was pointless! Hey, Tio, I got a bail! No problem, brother. I'll get you close to land. Too, too risky. Just get down and I'll use this conveniently located canoe to flee. Just, just drop me off and fly away. But... No buts! It's the only way. That's why street pass buddies do. No matter what. Street pass buddies. Tio! Hey! We, we shook them off! Come back! Ha. Ah, shit, he's gone. Crap. Oh, crap. Uh, I, I forgot to get a souvenir. Hello, everyone. This is Tio. Tio. And, uh, I brought Nate his souvenir back and we ended up just messing around. I showed him Popeyes and he's just been starstruck since. 